Hey everybody, welcome. It's uh, Joe Rossier, um, otherwise known here as Te Dang Zak, at uh, Dai Dang Meditation Center in Bonsall, California. I'm here to uh, introduce the, uh, the monastery and to give you a bit of an overview of the programs that we do once a month uh, in the area, somewhere in North County. Right now all our programs are taking place at the Fallbrook Public Library, but we might be looking at different venues in the near future, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but welcome to this presentation, and uh, I hope you like what you see. Whether you did or you didn't, let me know at the, uh, at the end. Uh, on this blog, there's a, a place for you to respond, and we'd like to hear what you have to say. Why don't I start with some of the history of the Dai Dang Meditation Center. We're part of a very long tradition that started in Vietnam in the, in the 13th century, actually. Uh, Emperor Chan Tai Tong of the Tran Dynasty uh, was the first to found this. He was uh, an emperor that united all of the country, and uh, he decided to give his kingdom away to his son and become a Buddhist monk, and he started, the, uh, he started our particular sect of Zen Buddhism in Vietnam way back when. So, um, the gentleman you see on the left is uh, Thich Thanh Tu in Vietnamese. He's in Dalat, Vietnam in our headquarters and he is the, uh, the current master, the current head abbot. And 50 years ago he revived this tradition, this very ancient tradition, and he, um, he brought it to uh, the United States, to North America, Australia, and to Europe as well. Uh, the gentleman on the right is our current abbot. He goes by uh, Thich Thuy Yak. I know the Vietnamese words are a little, uh, a little unusual, and they're kind of hard for me to say too. But uh, I, I think it's important that you understand our origins because we're not a cult. You know, we're we come from a tradition that's very long-standing in Asia, and uh, you know we we have um, many rituals and uh, rites and uh, ceremonies here at our monastery that date way back, and so. Um, we hold to the Zen traditions as much as possible, just as they were practiced in, in, in those early days. So, um, come by and join us sometime. We're in, uh, we're in Bonsall on Camino del Rey. We'll talk about that more soon. A lot of people are curious about what happens in monastic life. You know, what goes on day to day? What do monks do? People are curious about that. Well, uh, we follow the traditions of the Buddha as much as we possibly can. Uh, in, in the old days, very early, the Buddha woke up and went into the town or the village wherever he happened to be staying at that time of year because he moved around a lot. And he would go into the village and, um, and he begged for alms, for food, and that's how he survived. So uh, we don't do that. Uh, lay people come to us and they bring us food, so that's how we survive. We're uh, strictly on donations. We start off very early in the morning meditating from 4 to 6 a.m. So that's a two-hour session in the morning. We have our uh, first meal of the day at 6.30, around 6.30. Uh, breakfast at uh, 7, we take a little break at 7 o'clock. We, uh, we start our chores from 7 till about 10. So we're gardening, we do all the gardening that you see here. Um, we don't have any contractors come in and do this. We do it all ourselves. We do all our building maintenance, we do all our cleaning and cooking, and totally self-sufficient as far as all that goes. We depend on donat donations, of course. So, um, after that we have lunch at around 11.30, we have a little rest period, lunch at 11.30, and then uh, a rest period after that, and from 2.30 to 4 o'clock we study. We have visiting monks come to teach us, we, um, we study amongst ourselves, often the abbot of our monastery will teach us a course, we'll sometimes have a second meditation uh, session as well, especially on the weekends, and um, at around five o'clock we have what we call repentance and it's a ceremony where we uh, reflect on our transgressions I guess or things that we did wrong and uh, that's kind of a ritual and a ceremony too and that's what you see in the lower right hand corner of this uh, of this slide right here these monks are uh, my, I'm probably in that crowd somewhere we're chanting for repentance uh, 7 to 8 30 we meditate again that's another hour and a half so meditation really is important. It is the central uh, element of our practice here at Dai Dang Meditation Center and for a lot of Zen Buddhists. So that's, uh, that's sort of a day in the life. Uh, after 8.30 we might rest, come back to our rooms and study a bit, and then uh, lights out at maybe 9.30 and then it starts over again. So that's it. A lot of people ask the question, what does this all lead to? 
You know, monks are kind of isolated. They live on their own. Do they help people? Do they stay alone? Do we live like hermits? You know, what, what does this lead to? Well, we uh, at, at Dai Dang we're an open monastery, so we do have the uh, the public come in, uh, especially on weekends. But uh, there are specific and uh, tangible advantages to uh, having a monastery in your community. So uh, let's take a look at some of those. We offer you a refuge and consolation from the rigors of daily life. You have a lot of stress and strain, I'm sure, and we're an open monastery, so you can come here at just about any reasonable time. You can meditate with us. Uh, you can come and take a tour of the place. You can talk to one of us. We're open to the community. We do a number of community outreach activities, and this uh, meditation class and this cancer support group is a, is a good example. In fact, it's our best example because we're actually out, out in the community. We come to you instead of you having to come to us. We know sometimes it's a bit of a drive, so we're, uh, we're using different venues in different parts of North County, San Diego, so that uh, you can appreciate what we've learned and we share our experience with you. Sundays is a special day here. Uh, the, uh, the monastery is open to the public. We start at 945 and we, uh, we do some chanting. We do a little bit of meditation, maybe 20-30 minutes. We have a Dharma discussion and there's a lot of different topics that are... Uh, we try to keep it real. We try to keep those discussion topics useful to you in your daily life. We do talk about the tenets of a Zen Buddhist practice but um, we've done our best to interpret those so that they're relevant to your daily life and that they're compatible with a Western way of thinking. So uh, join us. Uh, and that runs from about 9.45 until 11.20, something like that. So join us for that. It's open to all. At about 11.15 any day of the week, Saturdays and Sundays, we also offer a free vegan lunch. Uh, monks, of course, have to keep to a very strict vegan diet, especially Zen Buddhists. That's a very important part of our practice, and uh, we have people who really know how to cook good meals, so we, we'd like to have you come by for that. That's a nice thing. A lot of people want to know, uh, in, in kind of uh, 500 words or less, what is Buddhism? Let me see if I can give you the, uh, the short version in two minutes or less. Uh, what is Buddhism? Well. Let's make it clear, first of all, the, the Buddha was a human being, uh, an awakened human being, but still a human being, not a deity. And uh, a lot of people say that uh, well, we're a uh, Buddhist or atheist. They don't believe in God, and that's not true. We just don't worship a God. It's not part of our daily practice. Um, the Buddha was somebody, a human being, who figured out how to end suffering in his lifetime. And he passed those teachings on to us from his day, 2,500 years ago to today. And those teachings are still relevant, so that's why we study them. And that's what we focus on, uh, the teachings, not the person so much. Um, Buddhism is really a method, and it's a design for living. It's not a doctrine. We don't tell you what to do or how to do it. We make suggestions. We tell you that there are certain ways of doing things that will help you and help you end suffering. But um, this isn't a... Um, authoritarian or top-down sort of thing. We're very tolerant. If you join us, you do that voluntarily and willfully on your own. Buddhism is also an instrument of self-realization. We help you get to know yourself. We help you look inward and, and, and take a really um, a really close look at how, you, how your mind operates, how to purify your mind, and how to find that inner calm and inner peace that we all look for. And it's that, uh, it's that ability to transform ourselves in meditation, and uh, I'll talk about that more. That's, that's what the session's all about, really. We're going to be talking about meditation soon. But meditation is what tran transforms us and helps us to end suffering. It's a daily practice, too. It's something that you can use day to day. It isn't just coming to a, uh, a monastery or a temple and sitting and praying. That, that's certainly part of it, but you can take the methods and, and uh, practices that you learn here, and you can take it and use it in your daily life. So, uh, come and join us, come and find out more That's about all there that. is to say about the Dai Dang Meditation Center. Uh, the monks thank you. We have a community here of about 10 to 12 monks. Some have been monks for many years, since they were teenagers, some of them. Others have just joined. We've had two or three recently who've joined in the last six months. I've been a monk for two years. But, um, 
from all of us, we thank you for coming by this website and we hope you'll join us at our events uh, out in the community. Thanks. Let me talk a little bit about why we meditate first before we get started in, in the class itself. And uh, for this particular video, which is going to be on the Dharma Doors website, or it is, it's not going to be. You're looking at it right now, aren't you? Anyway, uh, the, um, the reason we meditate, there's a number of them. We'll go into detail if you come to the class. But uh, we try to help you uh, discover stillness and tranquility. We help you find your true self, the true essence of your mind. Well, what, what's that, you might ask? Um, come to the meditation class and you'll find out more. Let's just talk about some basic fundamentals here, getting started meditating. Uh, posture is really important. You know, you see this nice statue here, and in most depictions of the Buddha, you see him sitting very straight-backed, you know, shoulders square, and eyes half-closed, and looking down at something. You know, sort of like that. Um, the posture really matters. You have to get that uh, right, but not to agonize over it. Not everybody can uh, sit in what's called the full lotus position. It's very difficult to do. Uh, most of us sit in some variation of that posture and we'll talk about that more. Just like there are different schools of Buddhism, there are different schools of meditation, but one thing they all have in common is that meditation focuses on breathing. It's, it's a basic body function. All humans do it. So we look at that, we focus on that. We even count our breath sometimes to get to a state of, of calm and peace. Um, breathing's really important. What's equally as important as the breathing though is what we do with our mind. Noise and thoughts and uh, outside interferences and distortions are coming into our mind all the time. It's a lot of chatter and uh, it's impossible to block it out completely or pretend it doesn't exist. So we, um, we let it happen. We let all that noise and all those thoughts come into our mind and then just let it go, let it pass right through. That's easy to say, but not so, not so easy to do. That leads directly to really the, um, the essence of Zen meditation, and that's our state of mind. You know, what is our... I shouldn't say this because then it, it, it's really un-Buddhist or un-Zen-like, but what's our goal? Um, well, what we try to do, what we try to accomplish is to empty our mind out, empty our mind of all thoughts, even stop the whole process of thinking if that's possible. That, that is the ultimate goal, but we want to have empty space. We want to go to that empty space, and we want to stay there. So um, I'll explain some of that more in the class as well, but mostly we learn about getting to the empty space by meditating, by actually doing it. Buddhism is a practice of direct experience. You can read lots of books, but it really requires that you sit and meditate, so um, you might find this class worthwhile. The point of this, post-meditation. We will teach you how to get out of the posture of meditation. You know, your legs may be uh, totally numb. They may have totally fallen asleep. And uh, you, you don't want to just jump up and try to walk around. There's a way to get out of that position and posture gently. But more importantly, what we help you do is uh, take that practice with you. You know, kind of portable Buddhism like you see in this picture. And hopefully the uh, bringing the practice of Buddhism with you isn't as quite as big a burden as this picture might indicate. But uh, it is something that uh, you can use day to day. Meditation isn't just about sitting quietly in a room. Meditation can be performed anywhere, no matter what you're doing, all day long during work when you're driving, when you're working, when you're just uh, doing whatever activity you might, you might be in the middle of. Meditation is portable. Well, look, everybody, thanks again for coming by. Uh, that's really all I have to say at this point. It would be really nice if you came and joined us. Uh, the meditation class, like I said in the other, other clip that you watched on this site, it's for anyone. Right? You don't have to have any serious illnesses. Uh, we just cover meditation as a, in a in a fashion that is useful for everyone. So come and join us for that. And if you are a person living with cancer, certainly um, you'll benefit from the rest of our program. So thanks for coming by this site and really look forward to, to seeing you. Bye.